Welcome in guys, James Phillips here, publisher of the Daily Mount Eagle, and this is week one of our DME Southern Orthopedic Prep Zone Game of the Week preview show. Brian Hill, we got Dora and Cordova this week that we're really highlighting, and you know, that's going to be an incredible game. Yeah, our third year of doing it. Hey, we're award winning too. That's right, yeah, we, we uh, award winning best use of social media in uh in the in alabama and our show also won the, the third place also and this so. one best best for uh multimedia yeah and so that's awesome that, uh and it's all because people tune in and people have told us they like this so we've continued to grow and make it look better and have a better presentation and today it's all about high school football and so we're going to go straight in we're going to talk to coach lockhart from door and some of their players and we're also going to talk to coach jones from cordova and a couple of his players and then we'll be giving our picks. Uh, Jonathan Bentley and uh, Jeffrey Winborn will join us at the end of the show to give picks. So what do you think, Brian? It's a way to start off the year with plenty of fireworks. And anytime that you have a door in Port Other, you know you're going to have those fireworks. That's right. And our location today is the Frosty Mugs, located right on the Warrior River. Uh, you can see the bridge behind us, the Lurling Wallace Bridge. Uh, we decided to meet here because it's kind of a, a meeting point for Dora and Cordova. The river kind of is the boundary for that rivalry. We're technically on the Cordova side, uh, which isn't a good thing for a, a Dora guy like me, but I guess you're comfortable with it. Well, I'm neutral, so that, I mean, hey, I can play Switzerland anytime. There you go. But be sure to come check out the Frosty Mug if you've lived in Walker County for any time and you haven't tried it, something's wrong with you. Uh, come get cheeseburgers. Get your uh, milkshakes. That's what everybody talks about. They've got a peanut butter milkshake that's incredible. Yeah, but then there's the James Phillips special. There is a James Phillips special, and I'll tell them about that at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. So that's a little tease. All right. Hey, guys. Coming up next, we're going to have door coach Bart Lockhart and three of his players, and they'll be talking about their game against Cordova this week. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with Coach Bart Lockhart and his players. First of all, Coach, could you introduce uh, the players? These are uh, three of the four excellent representatives that you had uh, at Media Day, so introduce them again. All right, uh, all three of these guys are seniors. Uh, to the, your right is Jamal Harris, and then Bubba Henderson, and then Aki Jose. Oh, Coach, uh, how has everything gone uh, since we've seen you at Media Days, uh, how, how walking into the preseason, how's everything gone with your preparation? I'm pleased with their work. Uh, they, they've really worked hard since then, and I feel like that we've made the improvements we need to make. We're not where we need to be yet, but you're not supposed to be at this time of the year. Uh, but uh, I really feel like we're right where we need to be right now. Excellent. And guys, uh, let me ask you for the first question. Uh, you guys are entering your third year with Coach Lockhart. Uh, obviously, you remember what it's like playing in a game like this starting off the year in a brand new system. Now you're entering year three with it, this experience. Do you think that's an advantage coming into this game that they're coming into a brand new system, they're working it out for the first time on the field, whereas you guys, you've already been through two seasons with it, entering your third. Do you think this is a big advantage? Yes, I do. I think it's an advantage because like you buy into the system for so long and like you trust your coach enough to play for him. So I think it's an advantage. I feel like Jamal said, uh, we've bought in to Coach Lockhart. We trust him. And we go out there and give everything we got. And they're under a new coach. And it took us a lot to buy into him my 10th grade year. So I feel like there's a little bit of advantage, but we still got to go out there and win it. I'm going to agree with my two players because just like they said, you got to buy into your coach and you got to believe in his system and trust what he got going on. So they they don't go out there and play their fullest and buy into what they coach is not going to go how it's playing. Well, guys, you've played this now when it's back to the start of the year, but a few years ago uh, when you guys were underclassmen, this, guy, this game was played at a different time. Do you like to start the beginning of the year with a rivalry game like this, or do you prefer it in the middle of the season? What's each of y'all's preference? I like it playing it in the beginning because, like, like for, say, this year, we playing Friday and, like, 
other teams around the county ain't playing on that day, so like it'll be like a packed out crowd, and then you know it's a rivalry game, so everybody gonna be pumped up. It's the first game of the season, so it's gonna be a lot of people there put on the show. I like playing them in the beginning. It gets our younger guys ready, cause like it's gonna be a big crowd, a loud crowd. Uh, it's gonna be hostile, so it's gonna be good for our younger classmen. Me personally, I think it's good to have a good rival game at the beginning of the season because looking forward, looking into the future for our goals, we plan on making it to the playoffs. So our rival games is going to simulate somewhat of a playoff game with all the intensity, how loud the crowd going to be, and all the other aspects of a playoff game. Well, guys, uh, what are some fun memories that you have uh, from these games with Cordova. I mean, uh, obviously, you guys have uh, another advantage. You, you've won quite a few in a row now, but what are some of the what are some of the fun moments for me? I say my funnest moment playing Cordova was when we played on my 10th grade year. We beat them bad. Uh, I had guarded a receiver named Fuquay. I did pretty good on him. He ain't scored a touchdown, so I guess that was my best moment on him. That's Colby Fuquay that's at Auburn right now, so I know you had to feel happy. <laughs> my best memory from Cordova would be taking their my linebacker about 20 yards downfield and caking him. <laughs> that felt pretty good. There you go. Uh, I'm not as aggressive as my other players, so <laughs> I just like the the end of celebration where we all came together after we won the game, and we were so hyped, so pumped. It was just regular how happy we was. Okay, now I've got to ask a question in parting. Now, Bubba's a championship wrestler. He went to the state championship title game last last title match. Either one of you guys, would you take Bubba on? Of course. I yeah, you take that. Bubba on as championship wrestler. Yeah. Wow. Coach, would you, would you take Bubba on in a wrestling match? Fully sanctioned, of course. Well, we, um we had a, a, a volleyball game with the seniors and the coaches, and uh, in that volleyball game, it's, it, it turned into uh, there was a collision between Coach Cordell and, and Bubba, mm -hmm. and so I'll just let Coach Cordell handle Bubba. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These people are talking. <laughs> their actions would not hold up to their words. <laughs> well, guys, we've had a lot of fun with you. Best of luck on uh, Friday night. We're going to cut away right now, and we'll be back with more good stuff. Welcome back, everybody, and now we have the Cordova Blue Devils with us. Head coach Justin Jones, uh, introduce your players and uh, give us a little update on how things have gone to kind of wrap up the, the end of the preseason. All right. Uh, with us today are uh, our fullback, senior Mason Robertson, number 20, and uh, senior defensive end Braxton Robinson, number 49. Uh, the preseason camp has been really good. Um, it's been really hot, so that's – that's been a testament to the kids and the coaches for um, just putting in the time. We had a great scrimmage last Friday night, not just the boys. You know, number one, we kept everybody, didn't have any injuries. Mm -hmm. That's always important. So we're healthy coming into, you know, week one. And um, we had a great crowd. Um, the, the people of Cordova, the community has really come out and support our boys. Uh, so we're really expecting a, uh, a great atmosphere Friday night. It would be my first Friday night in Cordova. So, you know, on a personal level, I'm real excited. Excellent. Guys, uh, obviously the big show and turnout the other night really, I know, had to do some special things for y'all as as uh, the waters have been kind of rough the past couple of years. What was it like to see that? I mean, it was just great seeing the community come out and uh, show that they was ready to see a new Cordova team. Like Mason said, it, all the community, it was great to see them out there. It was great to have them, have them back in uh, Hudson Curvy Field. Well, uh, question for you guys: um, This game has been historically played uh, to begin the year. However, uh, you, there was a couple of years there that it was played, you know, like middle of the season when you guys were in the same region. Do you guys prefer to start the game with a with a big rivalry, or would you prefer? you know, to play against, let's say, somebody like uh, Haleyville that's that's not necessarily, if it was a non-region game, wouldn't be a rival. 
I would rather uh, play it at the beginning of the season. It gets us at a good start. Gets us see uh, where we're at and just hope for the best. I'd rather play it at the beginning of the year too. I mean, it's such a big game, and when we come out on top, it's just going to lift everybody else's spirits up. Well, uh, do you guys have any any fun memories from the game? Uh, anything that stands out, either uh, that it was a really great moment for you, a goofy moment that may have happened out there? I haven't played in the past few years. so I haven't played in the past few years, but I know what it's like to be out there. Okay. Um, since this is our first uh, soiree with y'all, uh, you guys uh, weren't at Media Days, uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, what are y'all planning to do uh, once y'all get out of uh, high school? Are you, you guys looking at colleges or maybe uh, potential careers that start off the bat? I'm looking at some colleges, but mainly uh, careers. There's a, there's a few careers I'll, I want to go to, but I haven't really made up my mind because I'm seeing which school I can do the, these two careers and just go from there. I want to be a teacher and a coach whenever I get out of high school, and I was looking to pursue that whenever I get out. So, so Coach, this could be in a future assistant for you. That's the best kind, the that's ones that's played for you because they know the expectations. So those are some of the best kind of assistant coaches. Well, Coach, I, I and mean, then – We'll kind of direct it to all of you. Uh, when you come in, your brand new uh, first year and a big rivalry game. Uh, this is the first time you guys have gone out and executed a full game for the season. Uh, is there an added pressure on that? Uh, what do you think on uh, coming Man, in the first? For us, it's really just more about the excitement. I don't really feel like there's any pressure on on us as a as a team or as a community i mean right now you know everybody's just excited about the the transition of what's going on you know our job is like any friday night whether it's week one or week 13 is to make sure that 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 we're, we're able to perform at a high level i always tell our kids and our coaches we want to make it worth the seven dollars that somebody's going to pay to come and watch you play and so our job is to prepare correctly during the week so that we can have the opportunity to put ourselves in a position to be successful on Friday night, and therefore you're going to give the crowd an opportunity to, to be at a really good ball game in a really good atmosphere, which is what we hope happens Friday night. Guys, just all about the excitement and, and the thrill of, of the rivalry coming into this game? It's great. Uh, I don't think anybody's pressured. I feel like we're just going to go out there, play Cordova football. It's going to be a good game. This, this has been a while around here for a while just uh, all of us and it's it's going to be a big it's going to be a huge game a good game going to come out get get after it and like Mason said play some Cordova football well guys we thank y'all so much we wish y'all best of luck on Friday night we're going to be back shortly with more good stuff stay tuned Welcome back, guys. James Phillips here. It's the DME Southern Orthopedic Prep Zone Preview Show. I'm joined now by Brian Hale, who you've already seen, and also sports editor Jonathan Bentley and our new media coordinator, Jeffrey Winborn. Uh, we're going to go through the list of games this week and pick our uh, winners. Guys, who do you want to start with? Jeffrey, you've got the website, right? Uh, yes, I do. You're Everybody nice. should go to DMEPrepZone.com. And you can see all the games for this week. That's also your place on Friday nights where from now on you go on Friday nights, live scoring updates all throughout the games. And then we'll have stats, we'll have stories after the games. So be sure to check out DMEPrepZone.com. All right, up first we got on Thursday tonight, Coleman and number three Jasper. Look, Jasper coming to the game ranked number three in the, three in the state. Uh, I think they're going to take on Coleman pretty hard. I think Jasper's going to win this one at least by a touchdown if not more. All right. How about you guys? I would say there's some revenge factor here from last year, obviously. The only regular season game they lost last year. And with the returning, uh, if Jasper doesn't win by a couple touchdowns, they'll be shocked, actually. Yeah, I'm going to say probably two touchdowns. Uh, the one thing that Jasper still has to do is kind of work out their quarterback kinks because, obviously, 
they're going from Michael Career to a brand new, brand new guy. Um, so I would think that right now when you play in this game, it's about a two touchdown win by Jasper right about. But if it was played in week six or seven, oh Lord, this would be a slaughter. But I still say Jasper by two touchdowns. I'm going to agree with you guys. We'll all be there since it's on Thursday night. So it's yeah. the only, only game in town. So all of us will kind of be there and, and going over um, the coverage. Uh, I think, again, Jasper wins it. It is definitely a revenge from last year. They should have won that game by at least a touchdown last year. I say Jasper wins it by two scores. Yeah. All right, Jeffrey, you up next. All right, tomorrow night we've got Carbon Hill traveling to Good Hope. Last year, Good Hope won this game 20-12. to 12. I think Carbon Hill is going to be a little bit improved, but I still think it being on the road, I think Good Hope pulls this one out again. I'm going to go with you, too. I think Good Hope, uh, they showed a lot of progression last season, had a very good year. I think Good Hope tops Carbon Hill. Yeah, and, and right now with Carbon Hill, they've got a great defense. The, a lot of their returning guys are defense. But offensively, that's where they're going to be searching things out. I think Carbon Hill keeps the score low, but I do think that Good Hope pulls this out. Yeah, Good Hope won 11 games last year, but they have lost like 20-something seniors. And, but Carbon Hill lost almost all their offense. So a lot of inexperience in this game. But I'd have to go Good Hope at this point. They won 11 games last year. You yeah, almost have to go on home field advantage. Right, yeah, definitely home field like you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, up next, we got Curry traveling to A.G. Hicks Stadium at Addison for the first time since 1979. Last year, Addison won this contest 20-12. to 12. I have a lot of faith in Jeff Ocean, what he's going to do with this Yellow Jacket program, but I think the experience on Addison, they've got 10 seniors returning this year. I think it's going to be too much for Curry. Addison wins this one. i got to agree. I think Addison... They're fundamentally sound every year. They always make it to the second round of the playoffs. They're going to win eight, nine, ten games. Addison wins this one. Yeah, and I'm going to have to agree with you, mainly because right now Curry's got – they've got a great offensive line and everything else they're kind of searching for. Addison's a standard product. They just plug and play, and when it's experienced, that's tough. So I'm going to have to go Addison all the way. Yeah, I'm with you all. I mean, uh, Addison, playoff team, playoff run it seems like every year. Curry's kind of rebuilding, new coach. Foshi said Addison is kind of like what they want to do, run the ball, smash people. So to be similar similar styles, just Addison probably has more experience. Are we going to disagree on a game? Uh, we'll find out. Okay, keep it going. Uh, we've got Hansville at Summon and Christian next. Uh, Hansville blew them out last year, 48-14. to uh, Summon and Christian's got a first-year head coach in David Powell. I, I just don't believe Summon and Christian's going to be improved enough in year one to be able to just take on a team like Hansville and win. I think Hansville's going to come in and knock off the Eagles. Well, Coach Powell's in his first year at Summerton Christian, but he's got quite a, a resume uh, being at McAdory for all those years. But I, I still think, like you said, he hasn't been there long enough to build up this program. Hansville's not a, a powerhouse by any stretch, but I think Han Hansville wins this game. Yeah, and I've got to agree with you guys. It's, it's Unfortunately, it's just too soon to look for any great results thus far. So I have to go and definitely say Hansville takes this one mainly on experience. I mean, it's just that's the way it is. Yeah, I mean, Hansville won one game last year. It was so many Christians. So, I mean, they're coming into this game on a nine-game losing streak. But Powell, it's going to take a while. And that's a bigger school, so i go Hansville. All right. Uh, up next, we've got corner traveling to Northside. Uh, this will only be the second time ever these two teams have met last year. Uh, Northside won 26 to 25. You could almost call this game a pick 'em the way they played last year. And heading in, you got a third-year head coach in Chris Hilliker and a second year in John Clements at corner. Uh, honestly, I think the home the home field advantage uh, probably means a lot in this game. So I'm going to go against that and pick corner. Hey, I, I I agree with you. I thought I was going to disagree. I thought you were throwing me off there. But I'm going corner too. I think corner's very improved. They were much improved last year and they're returning most of their players. I think they're gonna be a really good team this year and a team to watch in that Class 5A Region 7. So I'm going corner as well. Guys, uh, corner has a lot of stuff returning. Starting quarterback who started five of the uh, last six games last year, only lost one game and that was the state champion. So they've got some definite momentum going in. Brashear's back, running back. They've got a good strong line. They've got wide receivers. You know, corner's going to challenge for that second spot right behind Jasper and I think it starts in this game I'm going corner I'm going corner so I guess it's unanimous yes <laughs> yeah. I mean I like you said I really like what he's done the coach Clements yeah. has done over there I think they're a yeah they're, they're just 
tipping the iceberg of what they could do here. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, I'm going to try to break the trend here. And up next, we got Hackleburg at Winston County. Um, Winston County won this game 28-16 last year. It's going back home to Double Springs. Um, but I'm going to pull the upset and say that Hackleburg can knock them off. Oh, we're, we're going to disagree finally. That, that, yeah. I'm going with Winston County. I have no uh, information on this game whatsoever other than last year's score. And I think Winston County, their, their coach, uh, new coach last year, did an outstanding job. Uh, they showed a lot of improvement and surely they're going to continue that and they will beat Hackleburg in double sprints. I'm going to say home field advantage is the only thing that really gives an advantage to me in this one. So I'm going home field advantage Winston County. I just think that that's the only real dividing from between the two teams. Hackleburg is usually good. I think Winston County is just on the uptick right now. They have a 1500 yard guy, Austin Owens, and the coaches, they got a really good coach from Piedmont last year and he uh, they're going in the right direction now. I'll take them. All right, now we're going to come back to what is our Southern Orthopedic game of the week. You have the Dora Bulldogs traveling to Cordova. Uh, last year, Dora blew them out 31 to nothing. Um, I, I, I was at Cordova scrimmage last week. I saw a lot of improvement on that team. I think they're going to be a lot better than last year. Cordova is not going to blank them again. Cordova's going to put up some points, but the fact is it's year one. He's having to rebuild his program. Dora's going to go in, and they're still going to get the win. Well, like you said, I've been very impressed with Coach Jones so far, even though he hasn't taken the field yet as the head coach of the Blue Devils. But I think this is going to be a really close game. In most years, Dora and Cordova is a dogfight till the end. You know, um, We're sitting here on the river. The river's kind of the boundary with Dora and Cordova. It's always been the rivalry. Um, I've got to go Dora. I'm a Dora guy, and i got to go Dora, but I really would not be surprised if the Blue Devils uh, pull off the upset in this one. I'm going to say experience is what matters. You know, I think this game could remind us a lot of Jasper Coleman last year. It's just a little bit too early, and Cordova has not worked all the kinks out being in Coach Jones' system. And because of that, I definitely give the experience edge right now to Dora. Games played in week five or six could be a lot different story, but right. right now, week one game, it's going to go door. Yeah, I totally agree. Now, James, this is the Cordova side of the river? Right. Okay. Well, I'm going with uh, Dora. <laughs> I mean, just experience alone. Jones, he's bringing some good, you know, there's energy yeah, at Cordova. It's been years, but it's just experience. Cordova, a lot of players, but yet again, a lot of them haven't played before. Well, this is such a fun game because they've played so many times. They've played nearly 100 times, and it's a pretty even rivalry over the years as well. And it's a very heated one. There's always, mm -hmm. you know, Cordova and Dora people just do not get along. It's like uh, oil and water. They don't mix, right? No, they don't. And, uh, but it's a, it's a fun rivalry. Uh, the players love playing in it. I, I'm glad that uh, Coach Jones is going to get to experience that in his first game at Cordova. Um, and I think it'll be a game that everybody across the county, if you don't have a team that you're following, you need to show up Friday night in Cordova and fill that pit up because it's going to be a fun football game to watch. Well, Jonathan, to your credit, you talked about the energy at Cordova right now. I was at the scrimmage last week, and after covering Cordova several times last year, just the, the record they had and everything that happened, just the life got sucked out of that stadium. Last week at that scrimmage, they packed that home side of the stadium, and it was just energetic. People were excited. They're looking forward to another year of, of Cordova football. Yeah, they've had. It's been a. You know, they love it when Cordova's good. It's like no other place in the county, really. They'll save seats. So I'll just pack the place, and it's good to see energy back at Cordova. Well, that's guys. You know, Coach Jones. I, we've obviously we've given him rave reviews. He comes in. He brings a lot of energy, a lot of positivity. It was it was really 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 good to see how much that made a difference. I, you posted some of the pictures. You could tell the people are so excited. And they are. It, it's it's a new. I think it's a new era for Cordova football. I do too. Any other closing thoughts for week one? Everybody's excited. First we left the game out. What did we leave out? Cold Springs at Meek. Cold on Springs at Meek on tough Thursday. Pick. This is a very tough pick. It is a tough. Pick. I think we have we agreed across the board on Except all the games. Except for the Winston County one. That's the only one we didn't agree on. So who do you go with in Cold Springs and I, Meek? Uh, uh, 
Let's go Cold Springs. I'm just going <laughs> to go home field advantage only, uh, and that's that's going to be me, home field only. I, I'm kind of with them. Uh, I don't know enough about this game to make an educated pick, so I'm going to go with the home field advantage and say Meek. I'm going to go with Cold Springs. I, you know, who knows uh, yeah. this one, but yeah. let's see how well, it turns sir. out. Um, but week one, everybody's undefeated right now, and so that makes it even more exciting. Uh, we want to thank our uh, host today. We're at the Frosty Mug. Uh, if people don't know what the Frosty Mug is, they have not lived in Walker County no. very long because it is a landmark on uh, the old Highway 78 right here by the Lurleen Wallace Bridge. Um, great place to come get you a, a cheeseburger or a milkshake. Uh, what I call the James Phillips Special is a, a bologna sandwich and buffalo fries. So somebody should definitely come out and try that and let me know if you like it or not. Um, follow us on Twitter. Uh, you give our Twitter Twitter handles. We actually have two Twitter accounts now, if you hadn't heard. We have the primary one that we've had for years. It's Daily MT Eagle. That is where you're going to find all of our news information. Now, our new sports account is MT Eagle Sports, and that's where we're posting all of our updates throughout Friday night. That's where all of our sports stories are getting shared, so be sure to follow that one as well if you haven't already. And then also check out our um, DMEPrepZone.com. That's where you'll find out all things high school football. We've got schedules on there. We've got, um, we'll have live updates on Friday nights. We'll have stats each week. And one of the cool things that I don't think many people have noticed yet, if you click on information about the game each week, like when we're lining up each game, go on there today, click on information. You can get to all the different, you know, this is how many games this team's won compared to this team, their coaches, what region they're in. But the coolest thing that I saw is that if you click on the stadium, there's a stadium name, click on that, and it will take you straight to Google Maps, and you'll see just, wow, there's the stadium. Shows you how to get there. Like if you're going to a road game, we've got you covered. You can get straight direction straight from DMEPrepZone.com. Uh, uh, and then also pick up our posters that we just got in last week. We've got scheduled posters for Walker County and also for Jasper. Um, you can pick those up at our office. They're a dollar a piece. And coming out this Thursday, it's our annual playbook edition. It's a 60 something page glossy magazine, all color, that highlights nothing but high school football in Walker County. So be sure to check those things out. They'll be inserted into the newspaper on Thursday. And if you don't happen to get one that day, you can come by the office and also pick one of those up for a dollar afterwards. Uh, guys, anything else? Let me uh, add this, Oakman is off this week. That's right. Lynn's off this week as Lynn well. Lynn's off this week, yeah. They have a gen Oakman yeah. has Jamboree. So. Oakman has a Jamboree. Yes. And like, last year there was confusion over was that a game, and, and we had some people complain because we didn't cover it. Right. We don't typically cover Jamboree, so no. don't look for the Oakman score in this Saturday's paper. Uh, that's just a Jamboree game. But look for everybody else. Be sure to pick up the newspaper every Saturday. Uh, and also tune in on our Facebook and YouTube pages on Saturdays. We'll be posting our uh, – post-game wrap-up show each Saturday morning, and uh, and then full coverage in the newspaper. As always, we really improved our coverage last year. We're gonna do even more this year. Keep watching our social media pages on Friday nights. You'll have live access from the field, and I'll be doing a live halftime show each week, so tune into that. Um, guys, that's about it, right? Uh, we will be seeing you all tomorrow night after all the games are over with. We're right. gonna be wrapping everything up. And so from the Frosty Mug, we say thanks for watching and tune in next time.